Okay. Okay. okay, welcome. Week two, tele 3013, structured cabling. Okay, so today we're going to get introduced to the telecommunications, and I'm going to show you what is involved uh, in this type of business because the uh, um, the uh, title of this course, um, I'm not sure if it says much, uh, so I just want to give you the bigger picture of what is involved in this type of business, all right? But before we do that, we're going to get introduced to the telecommunications world in this setting. I'm just checking if it's recording. Yes, it is recording, okay? All right, so we're gonna skip to that, um, skip to our PowerPoint presentation. So introduction, introduction to the telecommunications, and here's that famous car extra points that mean nothing uh, for if anybody guesses what that or tells me what movie that was from. Anybody remembers that movie? There we go, Blues Brothers. It's a good and old movie. And you know what the uh, the uh, funny and the sad part of that is, is that I remember when the movie came out. So I saw that movie when it was new. <laughs> All right, so telecommunications. Uh, here is a speaker, uh, here is a transducer, and here's the signal source, okay? Let's keep going. Telecommunications. The definition is uh, communication over a distance means uh, means by which this thing is established. And this, these are just some of which. Uh, email, radio, fax, television, pods, uh, internet, VoIP, intranet, uh, video conferencing, and others, uh, whatever, whatever comes out, it is part of the telecommunications. Uh, POTS stands for plain old telephone service. So this is, um, if you get, uh, well, in our area, most of the time you would, the majority of the lines would be by Bell Telephone, but there are also other signal providers. Um, and this is the regular tip and ring, regular telephone cable. This is the simplest form of telephone service. It is still being used. And we are going to go over that when we go, uh, when we go over the, uh, telephony, telephony. Uh, a transducer is a hand microphone. Yes, it would be, and we'll talk about that. Yes. Um, then uh, what else would be here? Difference between internet and intranet. Uh, internet is the World Wide Web, um, basically that uh, covers the whole internet part, and intranet is a smaller version of. Uh, communicative setup that works, uses similar protocols, the same protocols as the internet, except it's closed in within a building, for example, right? So it's like a private sort of setup that looks like internet, but it's not, so it's intranet. All right, um, okay, so uh, that now here is the basic, um, uh, the essential parts of any communication systems. And mind you, this is the, uh, the, the skeleton of a communication link. Uh, many systems involve uh, subsystems that consist of that. So there, for example, there could be um, a main communication uh, signal, but it could be branched out uh, into different sub-communication systems that also involve this. So there could be a big, huge communication system that would have elements like that uh, in its branches, right? So, but, uh, but uh, for the most part, you're going to see this type of uh, setup here. So at the input, we have a transducer and yes, a microphone would be a transducer that connects to the transmitter, then it's carried over a link uh, and then it's received by a receiver and it, um, uh, and it finds its output in the output transducer. So um, transducer, let's just take care of this first thing here, a transducer. So well, we're just gonna analyze the, uh, this thing bit by bit here. So first is the transducer element. Um, <clears throat> so transducer, function of a transducer is a device that converts energy from one to another. For example, it converts a voice from 
the speaker's mouth into an electronic signal or electric signal. So uh, examples would be a microphone, uh, converts sound waves to, uh, into electrical energy, loudspeaker. Uh, loudspeaker is a name for basically a, a, a speaker. Right? So, so the uh, correct name for it is a loudspeaker. Sometimes it's being used. Uh, <clears throat> it converts electrical energy into sound waves. Right? Uh, analog at this point, yes. Um, at this point, yes, yeah. Then antenna converts electric and uh, it converts electrical energy into electromagnetic waves and vice versa, because it can transmit and it can also sense the electromagnetic waves and convert them back into the electrical signals. Right? Um, now, signal process, signal processor or transmitter. Uh, applied as a system, or it could be applied individually, all right, depending on the purpose and situation. Um, as we go along, we're going to uh, we're going to explore that idea um, uh, of the situation here. Function of a transmitter or signal processor would be input signal processing, and examples of that would be audio mixing console. It collects multiple signals and combines them into a, sing, a single output signal. So it would be a signal processor. Right? Radio transmitter right? generates radio frequency, which is applied to the antenna. Right? So that would be another example. And uh, another example, which is uh, quite widely used uh, now, uh, would be the wireless access point, uh, also known as WAP it generates wireless digital signal in computer networking applications and it's bi-directional. You see that a lot in our school as you go along, pay attention to this kind of these kind of devices. Sometimes they're being hung from the ceiling and sometimes they're being mounted on the wall. That's where you get the Wi-Fi uh, information, uh, the Wi-Fi connection from, right? What's that? Something's crawling on my, not anymore. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so now uh, let's keep going. Uh, transmission link. Well, there are three basic, uh, <laughs> there are three, uh, three basic um, um, means of transmission, transmission links. And uh, you know, we distinguish basically air, copper, or fiber right, most of the time. Can you transmit things through the through water? Yes, that would be considered as a space. Now, whatever the heck this thing was crawling on me, it's still crawling on here, and it's now gone. <laughs> as your housekeeping items, All right? So uh, air, copper, or fiber. We are going to. Uh, Analog, yeah, ultrasonic signals in water, yes, um, used by submarines, for example. Submarines have something that uh, that they can for they use for locations. Yes, uh, they use subsonic signals. Um, also, they have something that is called a toad array, uh, which is an antenna or array um, um, that you can. Uh, Sometimes when the submarine is going, they have they have to slow down to a certain speed, and then they can just basically uh, put uh, uh, release uh, a wire on which there are a bunch of sens sens sensitive microphones sensing signals, so they can uh, so so the submarine can have a better audible vision if you could uh, say that. So yeah, uh, but most of it, it's always space, you know, in, in, in brackets, I just put space here. So that will be included as space as well. So uh, air, copper, or fiber. We're going to analyze some of that as we go along with our lecture, lectures. Receiver, uh, function of the receiver is the output signal processing. So it gets the output signal from whatever the output was uh, transmitting that signal. And uh, it processed, it gets that signal and it processed that. So uh, example would be a radio receiver or uh, audio amplifier. 
uh, or wireless access point as well, because it is bidirectional. Okay, so it's like a transceiver, transmitter and receiver in um, in one spot. Okay, now uh, communication system example. Can we identify? I wonder if um, if you can see this thing clearly or not, because I know oh, squeaky chair. I know that um, you know, Zoom is uh, watering down bandwidth as uh, the more people log in, uh, the more blurry the picture is. But hopefully, you're going to see um, some of the things clear enough. All right, so uh, let's see uh, communication system example. Identify ex essential parts. Um, what can we uh, what can we see here? Well, we just see a couple of microphones here. Right? This would be the input transducers. Of course, there's a mixing console. There would be uh, this would be um, a signal processor. Uh, this uh, would here there's an audio amplifier, one of its uh, 70 volt amplifier. We're going to go over that too later on. And this is just a regular audio amplifier. Uh, so uh, this would be the output processor or receiver, which also uh, sends the, the signals through a link and mostly copper here because of the copper wires. Um, and uh, that goes into the output transducers. And in this case here, this would be something that, that distributed audio speakers right here. Or this would be the main speakers, uh, well, main speakers right here, and it would be a monitor speakers here. And this uh, signal processor here has another sub processor that is uh, uh, pinned into that, interface with that. Uh, so here is, that's where things are branching out a little bit. There's another bunch of mics, uh, there's some wireless microphones. Uh, now, you know, anybody can tell uh, what kind of a system that is just by looking at it. Uh, where would this kind of a system be installed? What kind of a system is that? Uh, also, the signal processor converts the signal to digital. Signal processor, um, it processes the signal. Um, to answer your question, it processes the signal and it uh, for the purpose of transmitting it or doing something with it. So it can uh, process the signal into analog transmission, or it can process the signal into a digital transmission. Uh, from that, we can uh, distinguish the radio waves uh, transmission, analog or digital, doesn't matter. Uh, the um, optical fiber transmission, so it converts that into, the, 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 it will have another transducer within that system to convert the electric, uh, electrical signal into the light pulses. Uh, so it will be a light energy uh, or copper that uh, basically transmits the, uh, conveys the electrical signal uh, from one point to another. So um, can anybody tell uh, what this system is just by looking at it? Any wild guesses? Hmm? Where would this be implemented? It's just an example. Oh. There you go, audio system in a church. Yes, PA system, yes. A school, yes, could be that too. Uh, so yeah, what gives it away? Well, the choir mics, right? <laughs> that is kind of almost like a dead giveaway here. So what do we have here? This would be a podium and a lectern microphones. It would be, there would be something that's called condenser microphones. This would be wireless microphones uh, for uh, whoever is conducting the service. Uh, it would, uh, they, they would be able to wear those wireless packs here. And then again, there's a, there's a sub system right here that uh, that uh, it's, a, it's a mini link that is part of this link. So that's what I was talking about. This whole thing is a whole transmission link and it branches out into sub transmission links. So this hole here, this uh, between the wireless pack and the mixing console, uh, you can see the elements of the same thing, or you can uh, you can see elements of that through here. So uh, it's it's not just one thing always because things would be very simple. But if you take things apart and uh, if you if you treat them one by one, it's easier to to spot them right? and easier to treat treat them and easier to install, design, and troubleshoot and service. All right, so uh, what else do we have here? We have a mixing console, of course, that gathers the whole thing. There's a digital recorder um, that uh, you can record the service or you can play things back. Um, now, over here, we have a little bit of an equalizer I can see that uh, processes the signal that it goes to the main amplifier. And one of the channels sends the signal to the main speakers. 
and the other channel it's common practice use the two channel amplifier like a stereo amplifier and use one channel to, to power the main speakers and use the other channel to power the monitor speakers and the monitor speakers are here back speakers usually we put on the floor so you can uh, you can hear other instruments or other people talking and things like that in so-called staging area okay over here uh, there's another uh, amplifier so the, the part of the signal is feeding another amplifier and this is called 70 volt amp so um, audio distribution amp uh, and it uh, conveys the 70 volt signal into the audio distribution system the speakers are a little bit different these are the speakers that in our classroom at every desk on every desk in the uh, top right corner you're going to see those speakers i encourage you to pick them up and turn them around and see what's inside and ask questions i will explain this to you and we'll go over that too later on uh, so these will be some volume controls and there will be the individual speakers where those where would be those in like for example in a church system these will be the main speakers this will be the hear back monitors and these here would be uh, installed in the hallways, foyer, and something that's called a crying room. What cry? What is a crying room in a church? A crying room is um, if uh, somebody comes with a baby and the baby is crying and is disrupting the whole service, uh, then uh, the, the, the parent can just take that, uh, go to a separate room that is separated acoustically. So uh, people don't hear the baby crying, uh, but uh, there's also a speaker in there. And usually it's behind the glass and the speakers, uh, through the speakers, that person can hear still what's going on inside. So that's called crying room, okay? So that's, uh, that's, that's basically what the, uh, um, um, uh, in a nutshell, that's what the uh, communication system is. Uh, very, very narrow uh, nutshell. But uh, uh, if you expand the view, um, you are going to see these elements uh, pretty much in any communication system that is installed right, or designed. All right, uh, structure cabling. Now we're going to take care of uh, what this business is about. All right. Structure cabling, what is involved? And I have two picture, two pictures here. Um, structure cabling, not very structured here. Sometimes you're going to come across uh, service calls, <coughs> excuse me, and installations like that. Uh, I took these pictures well, something about five or six years ago. Um, and this is one of the... Um, fast food restaurants in Toronto area, downtown Toronto, where there's um, those old buildings uh, made into new ones. Uh, so this will be a complete renovation. And um, whoever was doing the demolition on that thing, just pouring, putting, tearing the whole thing apart in order to retrofit this thing with the new everything, floor, walls and ceiling and furniture. Uh, uh, they were smart enough to at least uh, tie things off because this would be the main telephone connection uh, to the whole uh, to the whole uh, facility right now. So when uh, when I arrived there, I was able to find that right and then make sense out of it. I had to relocate that. Now um, also this uh, here's a wall mounted rack uh, equipment rack. And sometimes uh, in some situations when I see something interesting, I would just take a picture of that. Obviously, they were not even able to close the door on that. So things have to be cleaned up quite often, right? And it says they probably tag everything to <laughs> the hanging wires. Yeah, sometimes there are multiple people working on things. And when they leave, um, sometimes they take care of the neatness of things and sometimes they don't. Um, so the more you know, the more experience you get, the better, because uh, you can just take a look at this, uh, this wiring mess, but you can still pick the, uh, the essential parts of that. And quite often uh, by the client's request, this thing is being cleaned up. There's a lot of cleanup jobs uh, done uh, along the way. Right? All right, so that's a structured wiring with not so structured pictures here. All right, now what it should, what should, what things should look like uh, is something like that. Now, this is a typical LAN configuration, local area. Um, um, oh, local area net. <laughs> Local area network. I'm teaching this thing, right? Uh, land room, local area, local area network. Um, so that's where the um, Ethernet cables they run from. Here, these are the 
uh, patch panel racks or the equipment racks. They run to the field and from the field, a uh, field is the rest of the building, wherever it goes. So each cable goes to some sort of final destination, whether it be a, a desktop location for the telephone, a uh, digital telephone or a VoIP telephone, or, uh, or, or a, a desktop a computer or, uh, um, or whatever else. Uh, it could be a wireless access point, anything that is digital. Uh, or it requires, um, or it could be a camera, a surveillance camera, uh, everything that requires uh, Ethernet transmission. So there's a lot of wires. Now, this is um, um, in order, this is semi neat, okay? I've seen some more neat um, um, scenarios. Um, but again, uh, by saying that uh, it takes a lot uh, experience and knowledge to install something like this, all right? And notice that even the cables are the, the cables are separated by the color, and sometimes the the client requests different color for different purpose. Like for example, for telephones or the VoIP voice over IP uh, telephones, we're going to study that too. Uh, they they request. Uh, the jacketing of the cable to be certain color and uh, maybe for the desktop computer they request the uh, jacketing to be uh, another color uh, but uh, the this is a relatively clean installation now when you download uh, after i'm i post this uh, the, the this uh, presentation on our class portal uh, notice that when i mouse over that there is a little hand that shows up so you can click on that and there's a little kind of a video with music that uh, will uh, give you some sort of examples of um, uh, LAN configurations and what's involved with data, all right? Now, um, when it comes to structured cabling or, a, well, it would be a glorified version of uh, if somebody watched the movie uh, Cable Guy, well, it's a very funny movie. Um, sort of like that, but uh, but there's a lot more involved in uh, knowing the systems. Now, uh, when you find yourself, if you end up in this type of uh, field, um, sometimes when some bigger companies, uh, there's some sort of a structure that uh, would assign certain people to certain tasks and you would do one thing but do it well and for a long time and sometimes you'll be requalified or reassigned to different tasks so if you're um, if you're hired as a wire puller uh, in commercial buildings uh, most of the time you will be uh, sent to, uh, to to pull the wire install the copper wire in certain commercial buildings if you are hired as a optical fiber installer or terminator, uh, then uh, you would most of the time you will be sent to places that require that type of thing. Um, <clears throat> now, when it comes to being hired by smaller companies, uh, you will have a more dynamic environment where you're going to um, be required uh, knowing pretty much everything at once. But uh, then of course, uh, you're not going to uh, be thrown into the fire or thrown into the water, you know, sink or swim. Uh, it, the whole thing is gradual, but uh, with smaller companies, there's tendency of uh, taking care of more things. And the bigger companies, there's a tendency of structurally assigning people uh, to um, to perform uh, single tasks. Okay, it's just a general tendency. Um, okay, now um, things. Uh, let's just go over some things. There's a data infrastructure. Okay, telephony, CCTV that's closed circuit television um, was very popularly used uh, up to late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, the best example of that, if you remember your old high school, there would be, a, if you had a broadcasting class, uh, there would be televisions in, um, in, there would be a television set in every classroom. And once a week, mostly on Friday, the broadcasting class would transmit their, um, their programming as the news uh, for the whole school. 
So uh, that uh, signal was distributed would be distributed by something that's called a closed circuit television system, uh, which is a network television network within, uh, for example, a school. Another example of CCTV closed circuit television. Uh, it's also referred as to uh, security cameras. Right? So it would be, uh, but I listed that as security surveillance, but I kind of listed them uh, beside each other. Now, security alarms, uh, a lot of that is being uh, uh, implemented within the telecommunication business. Nurse call systems. Nurse call systems are the systems that, uh, that are implemented in hospitals or nursing homes. Um, that gives you the uh, possibility of calling for service, um, usually a nurse, um, and those, uh, those um, there are different types of uh, stations, so-called stations. There will be a pull cord station, uh, quite often installed by the in, in, in the bathrooms or in the living rooms and so on. Uh, by the bed, one usually would be buttons. You would get a button and if you need, uh, you need help, you would just press the button. But that's, uh, that's called a nurse call system. And we're gonna go over some pictures of that. Um, nurse call system, fire, fire alarms or fire prevention. Um, fire systems is um, sort of, separate branch if some if there's a company that deals with fire uh there will be a they will be called fire and safety companies um <clears throat> and uh, if, if somebody if there's a company that does with that um, they would uh, they would um, this would be the major um part of their business okay and maybe sometimes they would do some other things usually fire and safety companies uh, do deal with fire alarms and quite often with security alarms, and that's pretty much the core of their business. Uh, for the fire, there's some additional training needed and training and licensing is required with the fire alarm systems. Uh, our college does have um, the fire um, fire and safety, I'm not sure what it's called, uh, I think it's called fire and safety uh, program there um, that uh, that you can you can join and uh, if you need to if you want to know what is involved in that uh, by all means talk to me and I'll point you in the right direction as well PA systems public address um, um, now PA systems they branch out to a different uh, different sort of uh, types of systems so um, uh, PA system commercial uh, as a simple all call system um, like for example in a big plant or production plant there would be a PA system that is connected to a telephone system so you can do the announcements through a telephone and quite often it is zoned um, uh, it's divided into zones so for example the production hall would be one of the zones the hallways um, uh, in the offices would be another zone um, there could be a shipping, receiving, and all different departments could be different zones. Because sometimes when you want to, when you have a lot of uh, announcements for just the shipping and receiving department in a huge production plant, then uh, maybe the people in the offices, they don't need to hear all those announcements. So you have the option of selecting a zone and doing the all call page, all right? Now, uh, PA as sound systems, uh, the sound systems um, are... Um, well, most of the time there will be something that's called a stage, uh, stage gear or stage equipment or stage like systems. And uh, for example, the church system that I told you, I showed you in the beginning, that would be that would be uh, uh, that would be a staging system. Also, um, the PA systems or sound systems are implemented in. Uh, conference rooms, uh, arenas, um, theater, uh, whatnot. Uh, the possibilities are almost endless, but uh, you know, for the most part, uh, most of you will be uh, having that. Now, there will be also, um, uh, aside from commercial, there will be a residential system systems. Uh, it's slightly different because residential systems is mostly uh, dealing with something like an intercom type of a background music or whatnot. Uh, and also is involved with something like called home theater. But then again, if somebody is installing home theaters, usually they specialize in that kind of stuff, right? Because there's all kinds of other things like construction going on and uh, structuring things in certain ways. Now, there are... Um, um, 
when if you got yourself hired in a company that deals with some of those there are huge rallies well now COVID 19 has uh, has messed things up a little bit but uh, every year there would be a rally of huge companies and distributors uh coming up to maybe like an international center in toronto right and they are doing a huge show they will be setting up their boats and uh that event usually lasts a few days uh, and you can sign up for different seminars uh, people presenting their products uh assisting the, uh, the distributors and the installers with things so um so the, the 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 learning when it comes to that never stops and those are pretty much uh, pretty uh, pretty interesting events uh, you get a lot of free stuff uh, from that. You usually end up with leaving with uh, one huge bag of brochures and whatever materials, and maybe some uh, gifts that you know. Maybe security alarm company would just you know give some gifts, like right? motion sensors or remote controls or things like that. Right? Uh, so that would be with PA systems access control. Access control sometimes it's tied with the security alarms. Uh, access control is um, well. Well, it has to do with controlling access implemented in hospitals or high security areas that you need uh, you need a special code to enter certain doors or certain areas or sometimes um, it's being used as a key like for example um, a big part of that business is the real estate agencies because, like for example, there will be a there will be a building that um, that hosts uh, many real estate agents. So there will be a um, I don't know maybe five thousand square feet uh, of a building, and there would be eighty. <coughs> it would uh, there would be eighty uh, salespeople that are hired by that company. Uh, now you're not going to cut. 80 keys uh, to the doors and what if somebody leaves the company to go somewhere else do you have to cut the keys for everybody else because you're going to change the locks no the solution for that is access control by the swipe cards or proximity cards proximity readers uh, so uh, if somebody leaves the company goes somewhere else and you don't want them to have access to that particular building anymore you just deactivate that card so that would be access control right? retail uh, retail um, business um, is setting up the stores and everything is digital everything involves um, everything involves uh, digital communications right now so uh, when you open a building uh, you need to have plumbing you need to have electrical uh, installation um, and you need um, now you need data infrastructure it's it's hard to imagine a building right now without a data infrastructure okay so the data infrastructure when it comes to retail mostly um, goes towards something that's called POS, which is point of sale. And point of sale, basically, it's a cash register. Right? But uh, cash register is not just a little machine that uh, calculates the money, uh, but the point of sale would be the whole conveyor belt and the, the, uh, the displays and the, the, the till and, uh, and printer uh, for the receipts and th things like that with the price can. So different, uh, different uh, stores, different companies, different retail outlets or, or, or companies, they would have uh, different systems. Uh, and that is uh, also something that's, um, um, that's very widely used, serviced, installed. There's money in there. Okay. Now, uh, system miss, um, all those um, require working knowledge of, uh, of whatever you're doing. Installation, setup, commissioning, and service. Commissioning is, uh, for example, if you install a system, you still have to present it. So there will be training sessions or whatnot uh, involving, uh, like, let's say, you install a new telephone system uh, in a huge, in a big company. You gotta train. You gotta introduce that the, the whole system to the to, to people who are going to use it. So that's commissioning service, of course, the self-explanatory design and sales. So you can find yourself within this uh, circle of life right here um, when it comes to um, uh, whatever you want to do best. And uh, you know, before before long, you might find yourself uh, having to do with pretty much all of them. 
uh, and uh, by choice you might choose to uh, to go a certain way it might be uh, good installations you might enjoy installing things uh, being on the road then go go ahead and you know setting things up uh, that would goes with the installation commissioning you know there will be a you know if you're a salesperson uh, or a technical sir technic uh, somebody who is involved in technical sales you would be the one who is presenting the system to the people uh, who are going to be using it you know service uh, that goes with installation um, you know, design and sales, uh, self-explanatory. Now I did uh, have some pictures here, so that's uh, that's data. Now data, I was trying to uh, to find some sort of visual images that represent data systems. Uh, the implementation is so wide that I just uh, I just I just presented you a picture of um, Ethernet cable some devices that are being used for data communications and here the technician servicing a uh, servicing a LAN uh, equipment here um, as we go along we're going to explore that a uh, little bit further telephony right now uh, with the telephony uh, we distinguish two basic um, uh, two basic trends in telephony right now would be the conventional and the VoIP the conventional systems would be uh, POTS, which stands for Plain Old Telephone Service, uh, and also it stands for the proprietary systems that utilize POTS lines. And, uh, and why they're called proprietary is because they have um, designated equipment produced by that company, and that equipment, those that telephone set only works with the telephone system that is made by that company, and it's designed to work with that. So other telephone is not going to understand that signal. Also, here's uh, I put a picture of a something that's called a single line telephone set, um, which is the simplest version of a telephone set, right? Which uses something that's called tip and ring. Um, tip and ring is the um, is the pair. Right. Um, it's almost like a plus and minus, uh, but it's not really. But it's, it's called uh, in telephony. It's called uh, <clears throat> in telephony. It's called tip and ring. Okay. So here's a proprietary telephone set, and here's an example of a single line set. Those are being also used still, and I'll show you how and why they are being still used. And here's an example of something that's called VoIP, voice over IP voice over internet protocol VoIP systems this is the this is the hottest thing that goes around for the last um, I would say maybe six seven years a lot of companies um, switch over from the conventional phone systems into the VoIP telephone systems uh, because they are more efficient and you are saving a lot the client is saving a lot of money by using something that's called the SIP lines uh, we'll talk about those instead of regular telephone lines. And also I just put a little arrow here that points both ways and I call them hybrid telephone systems. So for example, one way of switching to VoIP service or SIP lines, session initiation protocol uh, um, uh, lines. So it's like a te digital telephone line or virtual telephone line, okay? Uh, that uh, you get the sort of like a virtual telephone lines over your internet connection. Okay. Uh, you can have those and then they can be converted um, by something that's called ATA, analog telephone adapter, and they will be connected, converted into the POTS lines. So you can have the digital or VoIP lines connected to a building and then you don't need to retrofit your equipment. You can still keep your equipment, uh, but the service from the building outside is VoIP in a VoIP format, and the service inside is still, you know, that's if some companies want to save money, but usually what you're going to see, uh, you're going to see retrofits or change overs or changes um, that they would get rid of all these old equipment and they would just be replaced with the new VoIP telephones, okay? So uh, conventional or VoIP or sometimes combination of both, okay? Uh, most commonly used practices. CCTV surveillance uh, representation of that, there will be cameras, there will be city cameras, there will be cameras inside the buildings, security cameras. Uh, um, 
they can go huge as you know, maybe hundreds of cameras per one system, or it can be small as just four cameras per system. And the small ones are you know, easier to sell because uh, right now everybody wants security cameras. Uh, so the, uh, the systems uh, would be sold in combination of usually uh, four, uh, four camera system, eight camera system, and 16 or 32. Right. And uh, how is that determined? It's the uh, NVR or Network Video Recorder or DVR, Digital Video Recorder, and it's capable of so many inputs. And usually it's four, eight, uh, 16, or 32. Uh, sometimes I would see, and that, this would be the commercial type of uh, <clears throat> installations. Um, I think I saw one uh, system, but that would be uh, the one that, like, for example, like Costco sells that you can buy yourself and uh, you can install that. And it was a six camera system, but that's uh, something that's not that usual, right? Um, okay, next, security alarms. There is a, an example of a modern looking keypad. Um, you know, it's a LCD keypad, touch screen. And uh, quite often you just get the simple keypad that has the numbers. And usually that is being installed in a rough environment, like for example, a, a car shop, right? car, car service shop when uh, people have uh, fingers, dirty fingers with oils and whatnot. If you, uh, if you use that keypad, um, um, the touch screen keypad, you're going to make it dysfunctional pretty quickly. Uh, so uh, in the residential, you might want to use that because you know residential is a little bit different, commercial is a little bit different. But uh, this will be exam an example of a touch screen keypad. And uh, sometimes, if you really want to get cute about that, you can <clears throat> you can implement a picture of the uh, of the inside of the building or whatever it is house. Uh, and you can actually put the visuals of the devices that are there, right? Uh, so that's uh, security systems. And security systems usually are divided into uh, residential and commercial. Um, most money would make uh, on installing um, commercial, just to say that. Now, I shouldn't be saying that because now the uh, the the devices uh, are also uh, widely available and uh, the technology has perfected that pretty well uh, with the wireless devices. Uh, the biggest problem in installing a security system in a residential scenario, like a house, is uh, routing the wires when the house is already built. Now, if it's, a new con if it's a new construction, the house is being built from scratch, you get there early enough that you can run the wires inside the walls <clears throat> before the drywall is being put on and whatnot, then, uh, then yeah, it's a, it's a nice and good installation. Um, but, uh, but if you try to run the wires inside the house that the walls are painted, the pictures are hung, and you know there's a little fluffy dog running around and so on, uh, then, uh, then it's very difficult to run wires in the house uh, without damaging some walls, right? So wireless devices would be it, uh, mostly uh, with that. So now the wireless devices are more expensive because well, they are more expensive to produce. They are generally more expensive. Um, but then uh, you cut the cost on, on uh, you cut the cost on running the wires. So it kind of sort of balances out. Uh, it goes by the preference or wherever you can make the most money. Uh, myself, when I was, uh, well, I, myself, when I was uh, in heavily involved in that business, uh, I would prefer commercial because in the commercial, I could just walk in and I can spend one day and install like a medium-sized business. I can uh, spend day two at the most and I would be able to finish the job. Now uh, for the same job, if it comes to um, residential, somebody's house, it would take me about a week to do the same job that I would do uh, in a commercial environment, like, like an office. Okay. Um, all right, now let's keep going. Nurse call systems. So <clears throat> uh, there is a um, well display, kind of a, a display unit here. Uh, that shows the nurse call systems. Um, over here in the bottom right corner, what we can see is something like a telephone looking, telephone like console. 
there are different brands. This uh, this is Roland, but they're different brands. Uh, um, Duquesne, uh, Maxi Box, uh, to name the few. Uh, somebody was there during the lab. Uh, they were involved in installing uh, systems from Australia. Um, I forgot what they were called. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but most of the time they are they, they serve the same. Well, they they serve they serve the same purpose. So here's an example of a pull cord station. You pull the cord, and uh, the system makes a connection uh, to the nurse's station, uh, telling that the station was activated in room so and so. And sometimes it's uh, telling you that it's a bathroom station, or is a bedroom station, or is a living room station, or whatnot. Uh, then uh, this would be the duty stations uh, that uh, if a nurse walks into a room, uh, the nurse would press one of the buttons uh, here that indicating that uh, uh, that person is there. And this would be something that's called the hallway lights. And those lights have different colors uh, indicating different, uh, different type of um, activity that was um, different type of situation that was triggered by the, by the nurse call system. So it could be just an informa in, informative type of uh, uh, light that uh, a nurse say, yeah, I am here in this room. So the light would be lit up by uh, over the door for that room. Or sometimes uh, when a patient pulls the cord or presses the button, there will be a different color of light or it could be a flashing light uh, that uh, somebody needs assistance in that room. So if there's a nurse walking the hallway, uh, that person doesn't need to go to the nurse's station to confirm where the call came from. Above the door, there would be a light uh, indicating that somebody from there needs an assistant assistance. And then when they would be walking in, they would be press they would press certain type of button indicating that yeah, I am there. And then uh, um, once they would walk into the bed or whatever the patient uh, where the patient would be in that room, they have an option of canceling the call right from right from that station there. Okay, so that's a that's a. In a nutshell, it's a it's a nurse call system. Also, you can see a couple of telephone sets here. This would be the telephones associated with that nurse nurse call system. So the nurses on duty can wear those phones with them. Um, uh, so in you know uh, besides uh, when the call is initiated, besides showing up on the in the in the main console of the nurses station. Um, they would also get a page uh, over the telephone uh, indicating where the, the that there's a call, uh, somebody needs assistance, and from where. All right. So uh, they some of them get, they get com as complicated as it gets, and some of them are simple ones. Uh, uh, the neuroscope systems are mostly digital right now, but you're going to see a lot of older systems that are. Um, I would say hybrid because the main core, the signaling core would be something that's called a three wire. And the three wire would be one uh, ground reference plus uh, voltage and minus voltage, usually plus 12 and minus 12, sometimes plus 24, minus 24, but uh, usually it's plus 12 and minus 12. Uh, and that, uh, that it's, it's just like a trunk, uh, like a bus line that goes along the hallway and then, and the, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, then the uh, stations are, are pinned, pinned up, kind of tapped into that line uh, to get their power and uh, whatever signaling comes from. And there's also uh, in that system, there's also a home run wire that runs right to this main panel that indicates that the call came from that particular room. Okay? So that would be the, um, today they would be referred to as analog systems. Uh, but now more and more often, if not all the time, you're going to see the neuroscal systems involving Ethernet cable. Right? Um, so that's a, basically it's a, just plug in. And everything involves Ethernet cable right now. Uh, computers, wireless access points, any smart devices, control devices. Uh, 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 did I mention telephones? Yeah, uh, telephones, uh, intercom, whatnot. Uh, debit machines, um, pretty much anything that is controllable usually is designed to, uh, to, uh, to accommodate the Ethernet cable. Now, fire alarms. Fire alarms are, um, it's a kind of a separate niche, but it's also within the telecommunications industry, except for, you, for that you need additional training, additional licensing, and uh, that goes 
wherever you go, whatever the area you are in, you could be in Ontario, it could be different laws or regulations applying to that particular industry. Or if you go to uh, Minnesota in the States, uh, there could be a slightly different regulations. They are very similar, but, um, but there could be some different changes. So uh, it goes by area, by license when it comes to fire alarm systems. Okay. Uh, PA systems, uh, here's an example of a school PA system. Um, you're going to see less and less of these devices. However, they are still being used in some of the smaller schools or older schools. Um, each of the switches represents a room and you can flip the switch up to talk one-on-one -on -one with the classroom or you can flip the switch down, certain switches, a lot of them, and you can uh, page, you can all call page uh, to certain ones, or you can just, without flipping anything, you can, uh, you can select the all call, so you're going to page all the hallways and the classrooms at the same time. So this would be the compact version of the PA system, the school PA system, and this would be the... Um, a little bit it's also compacted but it's a little bit different uh all the brains of the pa system in this case uh are contained the, the all the all the all the intelligence is contained within this box now this would be like a peripheral device uh telephone looking thing so that could be sitting on the receptionist desk uh, and all the uh, connections and uh, paraphernalia that has to do with the signal routing and connections is tucked away somewhere else in the corner. And this will be just a peripheral device. Uh, and, you know, when a classroom calls over here, you see a light light up. And over here, you see a display of uh, that somebody class, uh, some class has called. Um, <clears throat> school PA systems is also a big business, uh, especially in the summer when the schools are closed, uh, high schools and elementary schools, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of renovations, a lot of retrofits uh, are, um, uh, are being done at, during that time. Now, Sean has asked coaxial, you, coaxial cable use. I just, uh, for the internet cabling, I had mentioned, yes, for the internet cable, uh, um, yeah, but that's a service coming from outside. Um, there are different types of internet service that you can get at your DMARC point. The DMARC point is a demarcation point, which is a point of entry to whatever facility or building. Uh, you can get uh, the internet or the outside signal uh, delivered in uh, different formats. Sometimes you get this thing by the something that's called D DSL, and DSL stands for digital subscriber line, and basically it's a telephone line that contains internet signal. Um, then uh, you can get a cable, uh, which involves the coaxial cable, usually RG6 cable. Uh, this will also be, uh, if somebody remembers still the old cable television system, that would be, uh, uh, that would also be used in that. Um, now it's a very popular way of delivering the, in, the delivering internet by the cable because the infrastructure is already there from the old television system that uh, was implemented before. All right. So, uh, so that was, uh, there now you can get, uh, you can get the internet right now. It's probably the best, uh, over the fiber optics, you know, the optical fiber. Um, that can carry a lot of different signals, not just internet. Uh, it basically, you just hook up to the World Wide Web or whatever the internet service is. And from that, uh, you can have different bandwidth associated over that. You can get uh, television signal, telephone signal, and what else, uh, whatever else, um, yeah, you know, you, you'll get that. Also, um, it's possible to go over the satellite, right? Uh, satellite dishes uh, uh, in some remote areas, uh, you can choose uh, satellite uh, to um, to get the um, um, to get the internet signal. Now, uh, also, uh, I haven't seen here as much where we are, but when I was sometimes was sent out to the western provinces, uh, do different installations, I would uh, encounter signal delivery by the communication towers that will be in area. So let's say there will be a big mall that involves different stores, different locations, and it could be like spread out over the area. And there will be a big communication communications tower and the communications tower would basically 
provide the signal to the demarcation points um, uh, in every uh, like a store or facility or location. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, you're going to uh, you're going to see different. Um, uh, uh, different things, and uh, this is one of the signals that was coming in here um, in the form of uh, uh, I think it would be like a, like a horse running, a horse running, and somebody whistling. So whatever you can classify it as that, uh, it's a it's a pretty interesting uh, telephone ring. <laughs> All right, um, now um, let's keep going with this thing here. Church PA systems. Uh, Church PA is um, uh, it's just like fire alarms. Um, it's a niche, uh, but it's a different type of niche um, when it comes to direction of which you want to go in. Um, so whatever you enjoy doing or whatever you are qualified to do or whatever you choose, whichever direction you can choose. Like I remember when um, uh, during the, uh, the winter term, uh, also we got Mr. Cunningham teaching the teaching the. Um, Weekend, weekend class, and he's also doing uh, labs for us as well. Uh, I remember introducing Mr. Cunningham um, to uh, to one of our classes, and there's something interesting that I said uh, to, to, to the class. I said, here's Mr. Cunningham. He's almost as good as I am, and I'm almost as good as he is because we spent all, about 30 years in the business in a separate, uh, working for different companies, doing different things. Um, and during those 30 years, there are still some things that he has done and I haven't, and there are still things that I have done and he hasn't. This is how wide this whole business is, uh, widespread. Um, okay. uh, so now church systems <clears throat> involve different type of knowledge. Uh, what do we have here? Well, basically you have something that's called more like a sound reinforcement the perfectly set up a church system would be that uh, whoever speaks here and whoever listens here the person who is listening has the illusion that the voice is mainly coming from that person's mouth so it's a pretty interesting way of balancing out the volumes and a well set up sound system in that type of scenario so there will be a church or be a theater as well okay? is that you don't notice that the sound system is there because you don't want this thing to uh, to to distract uh, you, you know this is not about having a good sound system this is about uh, experiencing whatever you need to experience there so you basically you, you almost try to make that sound system disappear. And, you, uh, and, and, and the best way to know that it's there is you flip the switch and turn it off and then people notice that it's not there, all right? So that's a perfectly set up sound system. And it involves some sort of a science of, of uh, how the sound travels, the speed of sound and uh, distributing the speakers um, uh, and the sound sources and so, and so on. Over here in this picture, we can see also this is all tied. The sound system is quite often tied with the church organ business. Church organ still is uh, quite uh, qu doing quite well. Uh, like for example, a good uh, church organ um, costs about you know, about two hundred thousand dollars right now with, with the whole installation, and uh, that involves installing pipe organ or electronic organ or combination of both. All right? So the organs, the, the pipe organ system is the most difficult to maintain because the, you need to maintain the temperature and humidity of the whole room throughout the year. So the pipes don't expand and contract too much and then they lose, they go out of tune. And then you have to pay money for tuning the instrument. Okay. Uh, but uh, also what happens is that uh, you know, when you have electronic organs, uh, this the technology went so far that um, um, that you can install, I install a few church organs as well. All the stuff that I'm showing you, I've done it. I've done it all <laughs> over the 30 years that I've been ill. Uh, so um, the, the electronic way of setting up the electronic system, uh, church organs, um, basically when you have a well set up electronic or elect electronic organ, it is very difficult to distinguish whether you're listening to electronic organ or a pipe organ. 
the technology went that far. Now, even to a trained ear, it is difficult to pick, to decide, well, am I listening to electronic or pipe? That's how good the technology is. What we can see here is that there will be a sound system somewhere installed that the speaker would be, uh, uh, well, we were standing where the speaker would be, but it would be hung over, uh, uh, over the ceiling here. That's the best cluster type of a setup. Uh, and um, over here, you can see something that looks like rooms. In those rooms, there could be pipes, but pipes usually would be exposed if it's a pipe organ. These would be something that's called a tone chamber. So it would be a big room right here. Yeah. And in that room, this room will be painted black, so, uh, uh, so you don't see what's inside. There will be a custard grill on top of that. Uh, the access to that room will be somewhere from the other side. There will be you know, stairs and a door to go inside. And there will be speakers, point speakers, a lot of speakers uh, put on the floor, hang on the walls sometimes. But usually they're being and they're being put in all kinds of directions, uh, scattered directly um, into different directions, to simulate the physics of a sound coming out of a pipe, right? Because when it has a pipe, the sound comes out on direct all directions. When you have a speaker, the sound comes out mostly one direction. But if you put a bunch of speakers and point them, scatter them all over the place then you get a similar effect that you would get from the pipe. And the rest is done by the volumes and the samples, digital samples that uh, will be produced from here. Uh, would you mind if we took five minute break to stretch? Yes, thank you for reminding me. We hit the one hour mark. Uh, so uh, let's get, uh, okay, so it's four, uh, what's the phone? Let's go by the phone. <clears throat> it's 403 right now. Let's give let's get uh seven minutes and ten after four. Okay, exactly on our phones, on our cell phones, ten after four. Uh, we're going to resume um, the second part. We're going to introduce, I'm going to introduce you to the assignment that we're going to uh, uh, to perform. All right. So okay, make it 411. Okay, 411 on our phones because we're synchronized. Ladies and gentlemen, let's synchronize the watches. 411, we're gonna meet here. Resume recording. Okay, anybody, uh, everybody can hear me? Still good? Sound coming through? All right, good. All right, so uh, that's uh, as far as uh, church PA systems. Uh, the, the beauty of installing uh, uh, sound systems in churches, every church is different. The acoustics is specific. It, uh, it's a marriage of two types of acoustics. One is, um, um, well, if you want to get just a spoken word, you want uh, something that's called the acoustically dead room. Uh, acoustically dead room is a room that has no echo, no reverberation. Uh, there is no, uh, uh, yeah, it's just a dry sound coming through. But also uh, uh, it involves a combination of acoustically live room that has a lot of echo and a lot of reverber reverber reverberation. Now uh, in church, it's, uh, it's the world uh, of both. Okay, for the spoken word, you need the clarity for the spoken word or something that's called the speech intelligibility. Uh, I'm not sure if you missed my first message. It's our test during our lecture next Thursday. Oh yeah, I'll talk about the test. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take a, a quick break here on it. Uh, yeah, the test is going to be an online test and you're going to have more than one day to complete that. You're going to have two attempts and uh, the, uh, the last attempt is going to count and it's going to be open book test. Uh, I designed the questions accordingly. So you have to look for the information uh, based on our lecture notes and participation in uh, the lectures uh, live online. Uh, and you can review them on the video and you can uh, see the lecture, posted lecture notes and uh, you have the old Google and internet to your, um, uh, to your disposal. Uh, so uh, uh, that's that's the way I designed the tests uh, for, for for this class here. Okay. Uh, so oh yeah. So the live acoustic live acoustically live room uh, is best for the church organ. 
uh, the church organ, the traditional organ, in, involves a lot of echo. And if you listen to the music that was written for the church organs, it involves long notes uh, and sometimes uh, uh, some of the uh, higher frequencies are dancing around and uh, mixing with everything else. So that's the, the, the best room for the church organ. But then again, uh, a spoken word has to be introduced as well with the same room. So that involves a special uh, placement of speakers in a certain way. Plus it involves the knowledge of the person who is speaking. They have to talk a certain way and they have to talk slower. Um, uh, in order for the uh, uh, for the word to be understood uh, by the listeners, right? So that's uh, that there's a whole science that goes into that. Right? Uh, now uh, distributed audio. Um, uh, when I showed you that there was that in <clears throat> one of the slides uh, in the beginning, uh, there would be those seventy volt amplifiers uh, with the crying room speakers. Uh, but uh, this would be distributed audio. Uh, the, the, the reason why we have distributed audio is that it even involves a lot of speakers being put all over the place. Oops, all right, just um, mouse has clicked. Uh, now, um, and then uh, you need to, uh, there one way of that would be a uh, series, because as a speaker, uh, every speaker, mo most of those speakers have eight ohm impedance. Um, so you would have to uh, do a combination of serious and parallel connections. Uh, so at the uh, main line, you still have eight ohms, uh, and that would be a very complicated procedure. And if you want to change something, the whole spider web would be affected. So for that reason, some, that's called distributed audio system was uh, was um, uh, um, was um, evolved uh, was uh, introduced, or designed, or thought of, or invented. <clears throat> that you will have one bus, main bus audio line, and you would tap in with the speakers and keep going, adding in parallelly. Uh, so uh, that involves uh, step up transformers over high impedance transformers, and the transformers would take care of the impedance matching for, for that. So remember, transformers transform, uh, they transform uh, uh, power, uh, sorry, they transform the uh, voltage, they transform current, uh, they transform impedance, but they keep the power, right? So that's the beauty of a transformer and that's where it's being used. So distributed audio, um, usually in the residential would be um, intercom like kind of a pleasure sound system in the commercial, uh, mostly for the announcements. Okay? Um, so that will be distributed audio. Stage audio, a uh, different animal altogether because you want this to be acoustically dead room so you can have the most control over the sound system. Uh, there will be different sound uh, effects, different uh, scenarios. Uh, it has to accommodate different type of place, different type of situations. So you want to be able to control this whole thing totally. So for that one, you want to have an acoustically dead room. And there is also a whole science involved uh, about uh, when it comes to the speaker placement and power distributions and time delays and so on. Okay. Uh, access control, uh, as I was saying, that mostly is being used uh, by the real estate agencies, but some high secure places uh, also you get the access cards or you get the key fobs that are involved in that. A key fob just looks like, you know, like that. Um, and um, you, know, um, you use that to access the doors and the doors can be armed with the door strikes. That it's door strike is a device that electromagnetic device that releases or, or shuts down on the, on the lock of the door. Or there will be something that's called a mag logs, will be magnetic logs, will be a very strong magnet on the top of the door. Uh, on the top of the door frame and that magnet will be activated and there'll be a metal part attached to the door. And when that magnet is activated, you can't open the door. Okay? So, uh, so that also is in uh, those access controls quite often are being tied or interfaced together with the security alarms. Okay? Um, <clears throat> retail, uh, POS, point of sale. Here's a point of sale here. Here's a point of sale. Here's a POS there. There's many POSs right here. And all that in, you know, is connected with the Ethernet. So the POS could be a self-contained unit, just like this one here. Uh, when, uh, when you have the cache till right here, you have the controls here. And you have something like a, basically a PC, you know, a personal computer, uh, sort of like you know, thing. Um, uh, it's a, it, uh, 
the processing unit, and there will be a display unit for the person who uses that. There will be another display unit for the client, and there will be a printer, a receipt printer involved. And over here, we see a price gun. Uh, so the, uh, what you see here, uh, this is one of the large department stores. Uh, you can pretty much tell which one it is. What do you have here? Um, over here, you see those uh, jiffy poles or pack poles. Uh, that's where all the wiring comes from the ceiling, right here, down those pipes. And the, the wiring is distributed uh, through that. Uh, that uh, this thing is involved, uh, what's involved in this, uh, the, the, the main terminology you're going to hear is going to be IDFs and MDF. MDF stands for main distribution frame, which is the communications room where all the main equipment is located. And IDF, it would be intermediate distribution frame. Usually, um, I, I can't spot one here, but it would be somewhere, you know, somewhere on the wall here hanging, um, like a refrigerator size black box. And it, is, would, be, it would be labeled IDF A, IDF B, IDF C, and so on. The idea of that is, is that the ethernet cable, uh, you can uh, mostly cut five E or cut six is being used. The most distance you can get out of that is 300 feet end to end. So those IDFs are being strategically placed around the room, around the building. So whatever is connected to it doesn't involve any length of cable that's longer than 300 feet. And all those IDFs are being connected to the MDF through the fiber optic lines because they can carry the signal over a longer distance. Uh, so that is uh, POS point of sale and that uh, it's also a, a big business uh, a good chunk of the industry is, is evolves around servicing this type of uh, this type of situations here all right uh, references and so on so uh, you're going to have uh, uh, this this presentation posted very soon after uh, after we are done okay now uh, for 20 uh, let's take care of the assignments that we're going to do all right and I have this thing set up, queued up right here. All right, so the assignment, the assignment we're going to do is uh, we're going to pretend that we are coordinating a project. And the project is, uh, where I call it the VoIP project, voice over IP. A uh, very common situation right now that uh, you're going to have to uh, change over the telephone system of a big company or a semi-big company from the regular conventional telephone system that uses pods or plain old telephone service lines into a voice over internet protocol, AKA VoIP system. Um, and uh, I chose that kind of a project is because it, in, it involves internet, uh, audio, distributed audio, and it uh, also involves telephony so you get a lot of those things combined into one so here's the voip system all right um okay so we're issuing this thing uh may 13th 2021 that's today and it's going to be due june 4th uh 2021 uh, june 4th um deadline 11 59 p.m all right so the uh i'm going to set up a um submission box and we're going to you're going to print all these uh, all these pages. I think it's fourteen pages. Yeah, it's fourteen pages here. And uh, fill it out by hand. I don't want you to use uh, computer graphics for that because um, you get more involved in uh, this. Yeah, fourteen pages. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that much. Okay. Com you know, considering uh, that uh, when you have a system to install, let's just say just a regular department store, uh, size maybe 5,000 square feet or so, um, and you get a manual uh, that uh, consists of two binders thick manual, uh, then that's a lot of pages. 14 pages, uh, trust me, that's just, it's not that much, okay? Um, so... Uh, <clears throat> Um, so here, let's just we'll just go over this this whole assignment. We gotta save this <laughs> trees. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah, well, we got to thank for all the trees to sacrifice, uh, to make the sacrifice for your knowledge. Okay. So, um, and then uh, after you print that, you do the whole thing by hand. You're going to take the pictures of all those 14 pages and uh, shove it to the submission box uh, electronically, just like we do the labs, all right? So let's do, uh, let's go page by page here. Well, I'm not going to go over 14 pages because some of them are pictures. Um, maybe I can, where's the full view here? Full screen mode. All right, can we do this? There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, so okay, so you put the student name here. Though that will be your that will be your name. Um, and over here, so setting. Let's get the setting. All right, time and place. All right, uh, you are the owner of a telecommunications company. Your company was contracted to perform a VoIP switch over. Now we're going to go. So. You're not going to do this thing right away, right? You're going to do this thing in stages as we go along and study uh, different aspects of the telecommunications uh, business uh, in this um, uh, version. Uh, you're going to get more information and more knowledge uh, so you could uh, keep going with the assignment, all right? So we got three weeks to do that one, all right? Plus, you can, uh, you're very welcome to uh, send me uh, questions over the email or ask me during the, you know, our face-to-face -face time during our labs. All right, so you're the owner of a telecommunications company. Your company was contracted to perform a VoIP switch over for a client. A VoIP uh, would be uh, getting rid of the old telephone system and in its place, we're going to put the whole new VoIP telephone system, right? So uh, see the office layout on page seven. Uh, let's see if we can uh, quickly jump to page seven here. Can we do this? There it is, all right? So here is the office layout, all right? We're gonna go over that. Let's keep going with the first page now. All right, uh, for this job, you hired two subcontractors at the labor rate of $55 per hour. So you have to pay them $55 per hour. You charge the client $95 per hour per person's hour, right? So for every hour, you, you, the person that you have hired, every hour you pay them $55, you charge the client $95 for every hour that person spends. So you keep the change, all right? Um, easy, <laughs> okay. Yes, it's saved in the PDF format, yes. Uh, normal workday, so this is just some of the disclaimers here. Excuse me. Uh, normal work day consists of a full eight hour, eight uh, working hours. So a day equals eight hours. Okay? Uh, see the SOW below for the job schedule. That stands for scope of work. Right? Survey notes, what is a survey? A survey is um, someone who is experienced in doing this type of job and is knowledgeable with, uh, with the equipment and uh, everything that's involved in this. Someone, that someone goes and pays a visit to the site and making notes. What is the situation? What is What needs to be changed? What needs to be added in order for the installation to go smoothly. So these are basically a pre-installation notes. It's called survey. Uh, so survey says, uh, the survey notes. Well, the existing network uses old CAT5 cabling. And in order to install a VoIP telephone systems, we need a minimum of CAT5E. So that's one thing here. So that means a lot of wires, a lot of new wires have to be pulled in uh, and the old wires have to be removed, okay? So, uh, the ceiling structure is a cold air return plenum. What is a cold air return plenum? A cold air return plenum is 
if you uh, let's say you have a room here is the ceiling drop ceiling which is the ceiling tiles so this would be a room with desks and chairs and so on all right and this would be the ceiling tiles here over here there is a true ceiling and sometimes you get one foot to play with sometimes you get six inches to play play with and sometimes you get like 12 feet above okay now in this uh, room there would be some registers or vents okay so it would be a, a supply vent that supplies the warm air into this room so it blows air this way you know, it could be cold air or it could be warm air in the winter or maybe air conditioned cold air in the summer right so this goes somewhere to the furnace okay. and it supplies that's a supply vent right. now sometimes you're going to see registers somewhere on the on closer to the floor it will be like a grid and that would circulate the air back into the furnace but sometimes you're going to have another situation you're going to see basically breaks in the ceiling and this would be like a grid all right just a grid and if you shine your flashlight through that grid you're going to see the true ceiling or not and this will be just a grid, like an opening, and they will be connected to nothing. It's just an opening in the ceiling in the form of a grid. And somewhere here in the ceiling cavity, you're going to have a huge opening that takes the air back to the furnace. That's, that's the furnace here. Right? Now, that open ceiling space above the ceiling tiles, it could be also open and connected to other rooms somewhere else. And other rooms, multiple rooms can be connected with that. And there will be just one intake cavity right here that creates a negative pressure, it just sucks the air back in. So uh, because of the negative pressure, the air is going to go this way and being circulated back into the furnace. If you run a wiring, inside that open ceiling space here in this situation when there is one main intake and it services different rooms if there is a fire in the building then the smoke can enter this grid here and it can be distributed uh, around the other different rooms so different fire regulations are being implemented when it comes to cold air return plenum this is this area here is a plenum here yeah. um, then um, different uh, materials have to be used more fire retardant more fire resistant uh, jacketing has to be implemented when it comes to wiring right uh, if you have a cold air return plenum like that, then you have to use fire retardant type of an insulation that surrounds or encloses the wire. So the, it has a higher uh, burning temperature. It doesn't produce as much smoke as just the regular PVC jacketing uh, would produce. So that's the reason for that. If you have just a regular closed system without that that you have direct vent going in and direct going out then this is not considered as called a return plenum then you don't have to use the um, higher fire rated uh, equipment but if it's a called a return plenum you, <clears throat> you have to use certain type of cabling uh, for the for the uh, for the fire uh, regulation and the ratings are FT6 or FT4. FT4 is for cold air return plenum. And this is just a regular one. Right? So 
So this one is the fire rated. This is not fire rated. If you have called a return plan and you can still use FT4 cable, but it has to be run inside metal conduits. So that's the uh, that's the rule. So let's see what uh, let's see what we have in the survey notes. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so ceiling structure in this office space is called a return plenum. So automatically, you know that you have to use FT6 cabling, which is about three times more expensive than FT4 cabling. Uh, all cabling must be suspended independently in the ceiling space. It's also fire and safety related reasoning. Right? In the, in this uh, drop ceiling with the ceiling tiles, those ceiling tiles are suspended on the metal grid and they're put on the grid. And the grid is suspended by wires that are fastened to the ceiling. What used to be done before the um, before the new regulations were implemented was that a lot of people would just lay this lay the wire on the grid here on the ceiling, just run it, lay it down, close the ceiling, and leave. Right? Or sometimes they would um, uh, uh, they would fasten those wire bundles with zip ties and what other devices to the wires that are uh, holding the speaker the the ceiling grid. Uh, right now, this is not uh, to be done. Uh, so the, the wires have to be suspended independently. So you either get a, something that's called a threaded rod and you drill it into the ceiling here and you suspend that. And over here, you put a hook and another hook, or you can put a hook along the wall, all right? And that's how you run the wires. The wire has to be independently suspended, not attached to the ceiling structure. The reason for that is, is uh, why is it fire rated? The reason for that is, what I was explained, is that uh, if there is, you know, if there is a fire happening in the building, then uh, the firefighting crews are entering and sometimes they have to go and uh, pull down some of the structure with those, whatever they call the hooks on the stick or something like that and they're going to pull that thing down. They don't want anything to be attached to the ceiling structure uh, for their own safety, and it's just to make their job a little bit easier uh, when they're pulling this thing down. And if you're pulling the ceiling down and there are other wires and spider web attached to it, it actually pr uh, uh, presents a safety hazard for the people who are actually doing that at that time, right? So that's why this uh, all the uh, wiring is supposed to be suspended independently of any structure that is there. So usually that involves something that's called J-hooks, if you want to use the free air run, or uh, you install the uh, conduits, metal conduits, pipes, and you run the wires in them. Yeah. All right. Uh, 437, okay. Um, da, da, da. So, all cabling must be suspended independently in the ceiling space, fire safety. All cabling must be suspended by the J hooks in this on this job. Activity, this is what we're going to do. All data is to be recorded in tables one through five. We're going to go over that. Calculate the total number of person hours. This will be your labor cost. Calculate the total cable and material cost. See the prices. We're going to uh, some of the pages are going to have the something that's called cut sheets, uh, which means uh, basically it's uh, uh, showing the equipment, um, pictures of the equipment involved. Right. Um, <clears throat> the J hooks are to be no further than four feet apart. Uh, the reason for the J hooks to be no further than four feet apart is uh, because if you have the J hooks further, then the wires are going to sag. All right between them so four feet is no less than no no further than four feet then uh, the wires can be nicely supported and without sagging um, which presents all kinds of um, um, inconveniences uh, quite often uh, uh, it it might actually compromise the signal structure of the wire because there's too much pressure uh, because there's a heavy bundle of wire the wires could be um, could be pressing against the other and the pressure can create um, physical deformation of the cable. And if you deform uh, 
Ethernet cable, you're compromising the signal structure of this, uh, uh, the signal specifications of this cable, right? Uh, all right, so um, communication screen must be split in jail. Data and telephone cable runs must be separated from the speaker cable runs by one foot. All right, this is to avoid the interference. Uh, the speaker, uh, speaker wires are going to carry a strong audio signal and that signal, that electromagnetic field can induce by induction can cause interference in the data cable. So that's why when we're running data cables or internet, ethernet cables, uh, we're supposed to run them as far as possible from any other cabling. Uh, the big one is security wires, the security alarm wires or thermostat wires, the HVAC wires. Those are the biggest noise makers uh, of them all. Uh, but also any kind of transformer or control devices, and uh, fluorescent lights, uh, fixtures, and any kind of thing that is active electronic or electric device, try to keep them as far as possible. Usually the, um, the rule is uh, one foot uh, away from that. Right? Um, now I said this is for information only. You do not need to draw to scale. I'll explain that later. Uh, calculate the price of all listed materials. This will be your materials cost. Add 20% to the materials, and that would be the client's price. That's what the client is going to pay you. After you buy the materials, you add 20% before taxes, and you're going to charge the client whatever your cost is plus 20%. And that's how you make your money also in that. Mark the main cable bundles with a thick highlighter lines. See the example on page eight. Basically, when we are running the wires, uh, you're going to run them in bundles. And then from the bundles, we're going to branch off to the different rooms. So the big bundles, you're going to mark them with a thick highlighter. Right? We're do using, doing everything by hand. Right? Um, mark the individual destination runs so that would be a wire that branches off from the main bundle and just runs into a room uh, mark it with the thinner uh, but the same color so you're going to separate the highlighter colors uh, from the data and the telephone oh no sorry the uh, telephone which will be the data wires and the audio wires as well the speaker wires <clears throat> um, and the colors are going to be shown. Where, uh, where will we get the quote for the materials? It is in the further pages there. You're going to see the picture of what is involved and the price of it. I got it all ready for you. Okay. It's, in, it's in within those 14 pages here. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Mark the, so usually this would be your job to do when you're doing a quote. And sometimes it involves long hours of uh, finding the equipment, and sometimes you think you found the equipment and you find out that this is not, it's not available, especially during those co these COVID times. Let me tell you, you I've, I've quoted some jobs now and, uh, uh, and priced some equipment. Uh, it is a daunting task right now to find the equipment that should be installed that's right and equipment actually that is available on the market to buy. And there's a lot of a lot of mess right now because of the COVID restrictions and uh, the, the whole thing that the COVID caused around the world. All right. Um, lead time equals 14 weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sometimes longer, you know. And uh, it's funny because sometimes we order some stuff uh, and then uh, we get the call from the distributor. It's not there. You know, can you, do you want something else? Yes, we canceled the order and then we ordered something else. And then because of the whole mess that those guys are dealing with, then we get the equipment shown up anyways. And so we just have to return it because we found out we didn't pay for it. We didn't order that. We canceled that. We still have to show this. We have to send it back. It's a mess right now, right? But during the, uh, you know, it's going to go. It's going to be over soon enough, I hope. Um, and things are going to go back to normal. If not, uh, people are going to get used to dealing with the way things are. Okay. Uh, all right, so um, the, yeah, <laughs> that's right. COVID sucks the life out of the economy. Yeah, sometimes sucks the life out of people too, which is not that good. Uh, anyways, uh, right, da, 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 da. Calculate your total cost 
what is it? Highlight the device, highlight the devices with corresponding colors. So basically, what I said, choose different colors for the data runs and for the audio runs. Then calculate the total cost, calculate the total amount that you charge the client, and you're going to calculate your profit. SOW stands for scope of work schedule. Okay. Now, this is a schedule harmonogram here. Okay. Day. See how many days? This is going to be a nine day job. All right. Day one, day two, and so on. And here is num the uh, number of people that are going to be involved in whichever task we're going to do. And here is the task. We're practicing creating a quote. Uh, now, day number one, removing all existing CAD5 and CAD3 cabling. So it's a cable remover. Now, you can't just disconnect the wires and leave them in the ceiling. You have to remove them. It's the law, right? Um, so it's good for us, people who are doing the job, because it involves time and you bill for your time. So here it is. It involves, it's going to, well, you will provide it one day, all right? Day one. So it's going to be one day. Two people, right? Then uh, day number two, install the J-hooks. Two people, uh, two people, and it's going to take one day. I'm just waiting for the stupid phone to stop ringing. Okay, there we go. All right, so uh, <clears throat> uh, install all the J-hooks in the ceiling, two people, one day. Right. Then uh, cable roughing in. So the J hooks. First, you're going to uh, first you're going to um, choose the cable routing, which I, whichever it's going to be, and then you're going to mark where the J hooks are going to be, and you're going to mount the J hooks. So you're setting up the pathway for the wiring. All right, now, then you, it, it takes, you know, so we designated two people for uh, one day, two people, day number two. Day number three, we're going to rough in all cabling. What is roughing in? Roughing in is running all the cables and leaving them unterminated close to the destination. Um, at both ends, right? So usually there's a LAN room or communication, main communications room. You're going to run those wires and leave them coiled up or bundled up in some sort of a safe way. Uh, so nobody steps on them and whatnot. Different situation calls for different measures. Okay. Um, and then you're going to pull those wires in those J hooks and you're going to put them into the destination location. Right? So you leave a big coil at the you leave a big big coil at the land room or the home run room, and then you run all the wire and you just leave a little kind of a spool or a loop um, above the where it should be in the ceiling. Right? The reason for that is the efficiency, because once you get into the rhythm of doing things a certain way. And then the job goes faster. You use the same equipment, same tools, uh, same uh, same materials, and so on. Job goes faster and more efficient. Right? So if you have one wire or two wires to run in your uh, uh, in your home's basement, then you can take all the time you want. Nobody's rushing you. By the way, if you do this thing commercially, you should see you should do this thing officially. I mean, officially, uh, efficiently. <laughs> Um, otherwise, you don't. Uh, you're going to spend so much, so many hours, and you're not going to get. Once you get paid, it's not going to calculate into a profit. Right? So then, uh, so that would be roughing in. Right? Now, another one. Here's the day. Pull the cable to pull the cables to location. So after you, after the roughing in, 
you go to every single destination and you run the cable, you undo the bundle or the, uh, the, 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 the loop and you run it to where the outlet is. And then you're going to terminate the end users and the head and location. So we, we have designated two people one day for this job. We're being very generous to the client for this one. You might actually take two days, but let's just, let's just for the sake of this contract here, uh, two experienced people, very relatively simple situation here. So one day, two people should do it and terminate those ends. Just like when we did during our lab, uh, the 110 termination, or sometimes there are two list jacks, right? And terminate the head end. So one person is running around with the ladder uh, around the building and just pulling those things into the wall, terminate it, put the faceplate and move on to the next one, run it down, terminate it, close the faceplate, move on to the next one. The other person goes to the land room, uh, arranges all the wires, strips them to length, strip that cuts them to length, transfers the labels onto the wires, so everything we know which labels are associated with each wire, and then running to a patch panel, punch it down. Right, the day goes uh, and then day is done. Right, now uh, another day here it will be installing the ceiling speakers, and test and troubleshoot to prepare uh, uh, to, to well, test, troubleshoot and prepare the cable test runs report for the client. So remember when we did the, um, when we did the um, testing during our lab, um, uh, we, we, did this, we did some testing, right? So um, we just took a picture of the, 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 the screen and that's our saving of the tests. In reality, it's a little bit more involved. Um, you don't take a picture of, this, of the test screen. Uh, you save the test into the device's memory, and then you can just um, uh, you can uh, you can print the whole list. Every every link should be tested because sometimes something doesn't connect right. Uh, there are lots of things that can go wrong. Not uh, always uh, because of your fault. It could be just a bad jack, or it could be some wire that's cut. Somebody else uh, moved the wire and they damaged it, uh, all the links should be verified. Okay, so that's the testing and troubleshooting. Uh, so installing the ceiling speakers and testing and troubleshooting, two people, one day, right? Now, another day would be deploying and connecting all the VoIP telephones, preparing the PA system for the switchover, cross-connecting the 911 telephone uh, onto the big termination field and pre-cut over test. Uh, there's a lot of tasks here. So uh, deploy and connect all the VoIP telephones. Well, you get a cart on wheels, you get a bunch of boxes with the telephones in them. And according to the serial numbers on the telephone, because usually you get them pre-programmed uh, from the hosting company, and you just match the serial numbers with the room and the office location, and you just go there, you knock at the door, and then uh, you say, excuse me, uh, I'm here to bring your phone, right? Um, so usually they say, okay, just put them on the desk, or sometimes you can unpack it and connect it to the, to the ethernet connection and just leave it there, right? Uh, so that's uh, you know, preparing the PA system for the switch over. Uh, so the telephone system, the old telephone system was connected to the old, PA system, which involves the paging interface, amplifier, and the speakers. Uh, so we're just going to uh, basically install the, you know, test the uh, test the speakers by putting a little tone here, make sure that, making sure that all the speakers have volume come through it. Uh, you can just uh, do a little page from the new phone system, or uh, you have the own device that do the, you know, uh, a page, all call page, or you can put some signal. So just making sure that the speakers uh, are. Uh, the sound system or this, the, the sound system, the distributed audio speakers are ready to go, right? Uh, then cross-connect the 911 telephone. Now, when it comes to installing telephony or telephones in commercial buildings, you should have one, at least one, or sometimes more, 911 telephone sets. That involves the something that's called a single line telephone, SL phone. Where's the SL phone, all right? Single line phone, that's the phone that involves, that is connected by, connected to straight to a designated 
POTS line, plain old telephone service line, designated regular tip and ring, the most basic form of a telephone line and nothing else. It doesn't go through any equipment that needs to be powered. It does, the telephone cannot be, it cannot uh, have the requirement to be powered. It's just basically the simplest way of having a telephone that doesn't have to be turned on. It's not active device, it's, well, it's active, but it's powered by the phone line only, right? The reason for that is that if the power goes down and you have a phone system, the phone system goes down with it, right? And if there's an emergency situation, you need to call 911, you have to be able to call it somehow. Yes, it's true. Everybody has a cell phones with them right now, but uh, by law, it's uh, you can't expect somebody to have a cell phone. You should be able to provide that uh, within the facility. So that's why we install the uh, 911 telephones. And when we have the 911 telephones, one phone can only be should only be connected to one line directly. You can you should not have two phones in two different locations connected to the same line because if one end if one end of the uh, building somebody doesn't hang up properly, that line is going to be offline. So somebody else on the other side won't be able to use that phone. Right. So um yeah. Well, we will draw the part of the cabling on the map. Yes, I'll show it to you. Okay. Yeah. Now it's five to five. Uh, I'm going to continue. You're welcome to stay. If uh, and if you have other things to do, by all means, uh, please leave, um, uh, and you will be able to see the rest of this uh, when I post it on YouTube. So um, um, we're going to do it that way. All right. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, and then it's going to be something that's called a pre-cut, pre-cut over test with the hosting company. So this is a hosted system. We're going to talk about what the difference is between a hosted system and a locally installed system. It's just for the sake of this thing, I was, it's a hosting system. So the, 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 the telephone routing is handled by off-site company somewhere and quite often it could be on a different in a different city in a different province right so that's where the the the, the telephone routing is everything is connected through the internet um, so uh the pre-cut over test is basically when all the telephones are connected uh they're going to be a bunch of tests they're going to be usually it's after hours you're going to go through a couple of phones um and um activate them and this is the system is not online yet but they temporarily at the hosting company they connected online and uh, you're going to uh, be asked where we're on the phone with the with the person who is you know at the hosting company so okay make a local phone call uh does it work okay make a local phone call then make a long distance phone call does it work yes okay then uh, they're going to uh, tell you to call eiffel tower you know uh, or call some uh, airport somewhere in the states uh or somewhere you know just to, to see that uh, the long distance is working properly you're going to dial a few 800 numbers you're going to dial a few kind of like those weird 900 numbers to make sure that things are blocked and so on and so on and so on they're going to test the conferencing that you know more than one person can be online so the conferencing has should be tested and whatever else uh, voicemail uh and what it just goes through the whole uh basically functionality of the system making sure that uh, there is no problems when the cut over comes right then the next day is going to be uh someone is going to um uh, train the staff on how to use the new telephone system. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a telephone system, but the difference between the telephone set in uh, 1972 and telephone set right now, it's basically a small computer on your desk and you have to know how to use it, have to learn how to use it. And different phone systems have different buttons uh, and different functions and so on. So uh, it takes about all day to uh, train the staff. Uh, and uh, you notice we just designated one person for one day, right? Uh, train the people on how to use it, answer questions, and so on. The system is not cut over yet. <coughs> Excuse me. Then uh, next day, you're going to perform the cut over, and you're going to test the system again. Right? So the cut over is done usually after hours. You know, When everybody leaves, then uh, the old system is taken offline, and immediately the new system is going, being brought online. So the old phones, you can't dial out. Uh, they're basically not functional anymore. 
the new phones are active. And then you're going to go through the same motions as if you did the pre cut over test. Okay. And after that, there's one last day post cut over tech support. Uh, so post cut, post cut over, you just uh, sent one person there to make sure that the new telephone system works nicely. Maybe there's going to be, there are going to be some other questions. Uh, somebody has a trouble with re retrieving voicemail. Somebody's gonna have a trouble with this, that, and the other thing. You just spend the whole day uh, walking around, having coffee and answering people's questions, making sure things are uh, working fine, right? Uh, notes. Day two, part two, C points, uh, activity, uh, day mm. Oh, we're going to, uh, we're going to go over that uh, later on. Day five, part two, remember the RG45, the tester, we, uh, we, I, I mentioned that, uh, that the results are being saved in the memory of that. Uh, I explain what the cut over means. Uh, day nine post cut over. I explain what that means here, and all calculations are before taxes. Right? And if you have any questions about this, see, it goes quicker. Here's table one. Right? Um, all the offices, all the locations are listed. And we're going to calculate the length of the cable. The drawing that I have, there is a reference scale this line is 70 feet this line is 40 feet or so on according to that you're going to make a scale through that and then based on that you're going to be able to calculate the length of each wire right so we're going to see how much how many feet do we need for each office or each location we have to remember that we need to include 10 feet to go up into the ceiling and 10 feet to come down from the ceiling. So there's 20 feet already. And at each location, we're going to include something that's called a service loop. We're going to make a service loop 10 feet above the ceiling and then 10 feet down at the um, LAN location, the communications room. And at the other end, we're going to make a 10 foot service loop above the jack that is going to go and then we're going to bring 10 feet down so each run in a horizontal kind of a 2d um, uh, two-dimensional scale uh, you're going to calculate the length and you're going to add 20 and 20 you're going to add 40 feet to each run so you could have the um uh, you could have the proper length of cable for each uh, for each for each run and you're going to put those lengths right here, right? Oops, right here. And you're going to calculate the total length and based on the prices that are further down the page, you're going to calculate the price per foot. You're going to calculate the total price of the whole thing of this wire, of the data wire. And you're going to add 20% and you're going to that's what the client is going to pay. And you're going to calculate your profit. So that's table number one, all right? All right, remember to include 10 foot service loop at both ends, not just 10, because you also have to remember that you gotta include 10 feet to go down. So every run, 10 foot service loop, 10 feet go down. 10 foot service loop, 10 feet go down. So 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, that's 40, okay? All right, uh, so that, would, that was the first table was the data uh, cabling, right? Now, this is just, this is the materials. Uh, each VoIP telephone requires a RJ45 jack, which is the ethernet jack, the one that you plug in the computer. And we're going to calculate how many jacks we need per each room. And then the cost per each jack. And we're going to have the quantity for faceplate and the cost for each faceplate. And you're going to add this whole up here horizontally. And you're going to add this whole thing down vertically. Right? I included here SL telephone here. How many do we need? I think we're going to need just one in this case. So I just put one here and I put the price here $15. 
and then you're going to put the sum of that. Then the J hooks, there's a J hook, uh, uh, not a chart, but there's a picture of those J hooks in the, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, the further pages and with the price. So we're going to calculate how many you need and how many need do we need? Well, we need separate run of J hooks for the data wires for the telephones. And we need one foot apart, separate run of J hooks for the audio cable, for the speakers. And they need to be no further than four feet apart. So that's how you're going to calculate how many J hooks you need for the whole facility. Right? Uh, J hooks with brackets, okay? Uh, now the total price, that's gonna be your cost. Add 20%, that's gonna be the client's cost and just calculate your profit, All right? Materials for the PA system, for the speakers, for the main hallway, there's going to be speakers for the washroom because all call has to include every single space that's there. If you need to make an emergency all call, you cannot just uh, you know, forget about the people who are in the washroom, right? So, uh, or somewhere else, uh, then the whole thing has to be covered with sound. So, um, uh, so that's why I just put here main hallway, washroom one, washroom two, washroom three. Uh, how many speakers we're going to put there? Uh, price for the each speaker station, I'm going to add it this way, add it that way. And you're going to calculate your cost at 20%. Um, and uh, that's going to be the client's price and calculate the profit. And I put $200 for the miscellaneous parts. Uh, sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. It's a flat rate. Uh, you're not going to count every little tie wrap or zip tie or little tiny screw or washer. Uh, usually it, the job involves some electrical tape that you're going to use. You're going to use some, you know, uh, markers. Um, you have to still buy those. You're going to use some other things. Uh, so basically if you charge a flat rate of, let's say $200, sometimes bigger job would be $500, whatnot. It's a, it, every company has their own way of, uh, of, of charging the flat rate for the miscellaneous materials. So I just put that thing here, which is going to include in this price. All right, so this is the PA system. It goes quicker now. All right, now the totals, 10 marks. So now here, um, I also, uh, okay, I specify the two marks for each correct row. So if this, the, you do this thing correctly here, you get two marks, two marks, two marks, two marks, all right? It adds up, yeah, that, this table is worth 20 marks. All right, now here's the totals. Uh, now you're going to calculate the person hours. That's going to be quite easy because you get the number of days and then you get the hours per, you know, the dollars per hour, right? So here is the total person hours, the total of all the materials, right? And then, um, what you're going to invoice the client. So careful over here, just get uh, your cost here for the materials, just total all the cost before the profit and then at 20%. So this amount here should add to the same, should equal to be the same one if you added all the uh, profits, right? Uh, <clears throat> so here's your to total cost for your uh, for your person hours, materials, then you do the difference, what you're going to invoice the client, you're charging, you're paying the, you're, you're paying your workers less money than you're billing the client for. That's how you make money for running the company. Right? And then there's the materials, what you're going to invoice the client, and you're going to get the differences and get calculate the profit for people working for you and profit for the materials sold. Right. And then over here, you're going to be your total cost, everything that you had to, that had to leave your pocket or account. And what is going to be involved with client invoicing. So this is what you're spent. This is how much you get paid. What's the difference? And it should be 
profitable because that's the point of doing this job, right? Now, um, I'm going to just go to the end here. This is how I'm going to mark, all right? So table one is worth 40 marks, table two is worth 40 marks, table three and so on. And then at the end, data main bundle highlighted as told, individual color. You get five marks for doing that, or you get not five marks for not doing that. Uh, data destination runs highlighted, individual color. So this, uh, you know, if you have the data run, data main bundle for data, it's, let's say it's a blue highlighter, and then you're going to run branch off there, destination run, it also should be in blue highlighter, okay? And if you have an audio, which is would be like a magenta uh, main bundle, thick highlighter, and then just branch off with the thinner highlighter. Okay? So uh, distinguishing the colors is important right? when doing some of the quotes. All devices highlighted accordingly. So when you have the data bundle with the blue, let's say blue highlighter, then the branch of the blue highlighter and just make a little dot, right? Uh, highlight the whole device there. It, it makes things much easier for the installation, uh, for the installation crew. Okay? Uh, you're going to mark the J hooks on the drawing. Uh, how are you going to mark the J hooks on the drawing is basically may just draw a circle. When well, this is the drawing here with all the rooms and stuff, just make a circle and put a J in it. That's going to be, and wherever, you, how many J hooks are going to have, uh, you know, you're going to choose the root and you're going to put the J, 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 and so on on those. Okay? All right, now uh, J hooks marked on, so you get five marks for that or not five. Now here's thing, something that's called, that's worth 30%. If you make a mess, if you mess up something, make a mistake on the quote, your company and you can lose money, substantial amount of money. The bigger the job, the bigger the profit, or the bigger the danger of the risk of losing money if you miscalculate the quote. <laughs> right, uh, so we're going to put was the quote, quote profitable? You get thirty marks. If you lose money on that, you lose the thirty marks out of the two hundred. Okay. All right. So now let's just take a look at the drawings here quickly. I'm going to rotate that. Rotate view clockwise. Right. Right. All right. So here is the uh, layout. And I see from here to here, I mount, marked it as 70 feet. So based on that, you can, you can calculate with a ruler, what is the distance for four feet? Because this, the, this, the J hooks should be no further than, than four feet. Once you mark those J hooks around, you choose the pathway. This is just an example that I said, uh, I, I showed on the, you are going to use this. It's a blank drawing here, right? This is an example of how I would put the highlighters, all right? Um, so let's just say here. Now I put the speakers here. Um, S stands for the speaker. Now here is a legend. This little symbol says from wall mounted telephone jack, wall mounted data jack, um, ceiling mounted speakers, paging speaker, and so on. Extra porn, uh, yeah, it adds up, right? Um, and I'm going to, uh, once you do the quotes, uh, uh, Dylan, hold on to this thought. I'm glad you asked it because part of this whole exercise is your question falls into some sort of outcome of this whole exercise, all right? So I, with a smile, I'm going to say, I'm not going to answer this question fully. I want you to go through the exercise and come back to this question, all right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so here are the office numbers, lobby, and so on. I'm sure you're going to have some questions along the way, either by email or talk to me during the labs. Okay. Um, and uh, everything is labeled of what is what. 
and you should do it as such. And any other questions you're going to have, uh, you're going to ask me and I'm going to answer. But I'm, here's the 911 telephone set. This is the, the reception uh, desk here. Uh, so that's where the main phone goes. And this little zigzaggy thing here is representing a modular furniture. It's just like those cubicle furniture things. So here's the reception desk. And here is going to be the 911 phone, which is going to be the single line phone. Right? And everything else is marked on this, uh, on this thing. Just take a look at this and see if it makes sense to you. Now, here's the conference room. What does it have? Floor mounted data jack. Okay. So it I put this thing on that it does include the data jacks, but it still involves the CAT5, old CAT5 wiring. Now, what we're doing here is we are replacing the CAT5 with a CAT5E for the purpose of running the VoIP telephones. So you're going to have run one here. The other one, it just shows the existing telephone outlet. You're just going to remove that. But I'm just putting it on just to show where it is. But you're going to replace it with the data wire for the VoIP telephone. Now the conference table here has one, two, three, four data jacks. And it is not part of our job to change those, right? Although it has data jacks in there. What do you do in this situation? In this situation, uh, if you're the owner of the company, you would talk to the owner of this company. If you're, if you're the owner of the installation company, you're going to talk to your client and say, look, we are going to run all those wires. Right. And you have four data wires. So once we are doing this, all of that, for extra so-and-so, we could also replace these if you would like. Right. Because we're doing it anyway, it's going to cost you more later. You're going to have to replace them with at least CAT 5E or CAT 6 later on. And you can have it done now while we're doing this. But it's going to cost you a little bit extra they're going to appreciate that you pointed this thing out and they're going to make a decision whether they want it done or not, right? So that's how you make extra money uh, after the quote has been done. Right? Tricks of the trade. <laughs> um, now, here is, I'm going to turn it back, the, turn the view back a little bit. Yeah, view, rotate, view, counterclockwise. All right, we're back to, so, not always you have to um, list all the materials in such way like this. Sometimes it's a good idea to list and show them because the client wants it. They, they request um, the knowledge of what you're going to use and blah, 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 and how it's going to cost. You don't, you're not going to list the prices because you're going to just give them the final price for the job. So you might want to skip some information like pricing. I just give you the pricing on, on this, um, on this uh, page here for your reference for the purpose of quote. This is not what you would show to client. Maybe you would show part of it. This is what this part of equipment looks like. This is the model number of that. That's what it looks like. And sometimes it is going to work for you and sometimes it's going to work against you. You go by your gut feeling sometimes or by your experience. And how, is, how does it work? Sometimes the client appreciates that you did that extra work and you're going to go, oh yeah, you know, this is great. This company, you know, they, they are great. Yeah, they did this extra, you know, extra steps. They, they, they went extra mile to do this and they're going to appreciate it and you're going to grow you know, three inches taller in their eye and you know, they're going to recommend you to other people. There is another group of people that are going to think that, oh, they did that extra time, all that extra time. I'm pretty sure that they're billing us that extra time because they have to spend that. So I'm pretty sure their job is more expensive because they have to do that extra, those extra steps. 
there is no way to tell which way the winds are going to blow, right? When, when it goes, uh, so you just go by a gut feeling or by the uh, by your experience. Uh, sometimes you may want to experiment, see if you get more sales doing it this way or you get more sales doing it that way. Um, things change all the time. <laughs> uh, so here's what the J hook looks like. And uh, I have a couple of those in the lab, I'm going to show it to you. This is how you run the wires. Now the J hooks can be mounted on the threaded rods and mount and mounted to the ceiling, or they could be mounted on the brackets. Uh, actually, those are the brackets. The brackets are mounted on the threaded rods and mounted to the ceiling, or they could be screwed on directly to a wall, depending on the situation. And this is how those J hooks are being used. There's a hook in the shape of a J, and <laughs> there's a bundle of wires running through it, right? That's, uh, and here's the ceiling, right? Speaker station, uh, next time you're in the lab, uh, turn these over that are on the desk, see what these are. And we're going to go over them too. But basically it's a, it's a speaker station that requires a wire to be run to it. And I listed them for the purpose of simplicity uh, without the back box cans. Usually they're enclosed in something that calls, that is called a back box. So it's a metal box that encloses that speaker in the ceiling. Sometimes you, uh, you can get away without putting those bag boxes, but now more and more often you're going to be required that those bag boxes have to be put on because of whatever rules and regulations. Personally, I think the speakers sound better without the bag boxes, but for the rules and regulations uh, that have to do with the safety inspector and whatnot, uh, more and more often you're just going to have to put those bag boxes because you have to. Uh, <clears throat> now, this contract here includes no back boxes, and there are those mounting rails. Okay, so here's a ceiling 70 volt, uh, should be 70 volt here, speaker station, model number, generic, whatever, uh, price $23 per station with mounting rails. Okay? Those mounting rails are about 75 cents each or something like that. Here is a single line telephone set. That's the one that you would buy at Walmart or local, you know, local <laughs> online store. <laughs> um, uh, model, whatever it is. And usually they have it around between $10 and $20. Okay. There's a VoIP telephone set. Here's the price. Uh, VoIP display telephone set, generic. So this, um, 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 you just got to read the drawing here all the offices and the receptions, they are going to get these uh, display phones, uh, VoIP telephones, and it's about $500 per phone. Now the lobby is going to get the basic VoIP telephone with a little smaller display and it's much cheaper, it's $200 each only. There's a PA amplifier, all those things are listed there. There's a PA amplifier output. The price of the PA amplifier is $300. This is how the constant voltage system works. There's a main line and all the speakers with the step up, step down transformers are connecting into the main line and the amplifier internally has or externally has a step up transformer. So it steps up the impedance and those speakers connect to that and they step down the impedance through this little step down transformer. Right? That's how we are able to connect a lot of speakers parallel into one main line without worrying about the homage calculation. Now here's a faceplate, look at that, one dollar. All right, here's the jack insert. So this is RJ45 jack. So every phone is going to require one of these and one of those, right? Because this is the faceplate you're putting on and you're snapping on to the, uh, to the faceplate, you're snapping on the jack. Now the price is, can be different uh, whenever you're going to price. So you're going to have to find your own prices whenever you're doing a real quote for a real client for a real job. But this, uh, you know, uh, we have to put some prices. So I just put dollar per faceplate and dollar ninety one per jack for this purpose of this exercise. All right. Now, Cat five E cable, thousand feet. Price per box FT six seventy six dollars. FT sorry FT six hundred sixty five dollars. FT four $76, and based on what we talked about in the beginning of the second part of this lecture, you are going to choose one or the other. If you choose the wrong one, ooh, that would be bad. 
All right. Uh, now, <clears throat> uh, speaker cable, 18, uh, 18 gauge uh, American wiring gauge. So the thickness is 18 gauge speaker wire, unshielded pair, 1,000 feet box costs, FT6, $109, FT4, $90. Then there's some patch cables. I'm not sure if we are listing them, but uh, if you need some, uh, usually you're going to get some price on the patch cables because... <clears throat> Uh, sometimes you need to use them, and that will be included uh, within that $200 uh, flat rate for miscellaneous materials, okay? Uh, now, here's the ATA adapter. <clears throat> I'm going to, we're going to go over what that is. Uh, and then there's a paging interface. Basically, ATA adapter is analog, analog telephone adapter, and uh, it one end connects to the Ethernet, and it is programmed to search out the hosting thing. It's just like a telephone, right? And the other end provides um, analog pot signal, plain old telephone service signal, single line, just a regular telephone signal, so that the paging interface can be connected to that end of that. And once you select that paging interface, you dial the extension number or you press a button that's associated with the paging interface, Paging interface gets activated and it produces a ring tone on the or a ringing signal on the other end, just like if there was a telephone. If you connected the telephone, it would be ringing, but it's not connected to a telephone, it's connected to a paging interface. That paging interface is going to sense that ringing signal and it's going to answer. It's automatic, right? Uh, now, there are different paging interfaces. Some of them are simple, some of them are more complicated. Depends. Sometimes it's going to give you, it's going to answer, it's going to give you a confirmation tone that sounds like beep, you know, it's confirmation beep, uh, that means that you're ready to talk. And some other systems, it could be programmed in a different way. Uh, it could, once you get the confirmation tone, it's not your turn to speak, it's your turn to select which zone you want to page, and then you're going to get another confirmation tone that you, means you can speak, depending on the situation, depending on the setup, depending on the programming. That's why uh, there's that day designated for the training. This is part of the knowledge that people are going to get. Uh, all right. Now, connecting the VoIP telephone, uh, just a little uh, um, you know, visual aid that I'm giving you here. How are we going to connect the telephones? All right. Well, sometimes uh, what's going to happen is that uh, people have their PCs or the computers connected to a jack in a wall. There's no additional wiring. So what happens is the telephone has a, like a true connection. So you unplug the computer from the wall, from the computer jack. And you are going to plug in the telephone. And from the telephone output, you're going to plug in. The, so you're putting in line, right? Oh, wow. I, it's 526. Uh, we get four minutes before, we can, before we're going to get cut off. <laughs> All right. Four minutes. Uh, all right, so this is another visual here. This is how we are doing this thing. And this is a switch, POE. Um, and we're going to talk about what POE is. And this is what the, the switch is connected to the local area network. And uh, connecting the PA system, how we're going to connect the PA system. The PA system gets from the, the connection from the switch to the ATA adapter. ATA adapter connects to the paging interface. Paging interface connects to the amplifier and the amplifier outputs the signal to the speakers, magic, okay? We only have to print the pages we need to fill out. No, print all the pages because you're going to include all of them uh, in, the, in, the, in the report, in the uh, quote, yeah. Uh, now, here's the marking. I'm just going to give you whatever marks per table. This is, the, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tally things up and you're going to get a mark out of 200. Okay, so, wow. Two hour, two and a half hours uh, of me talking. I think I'm developing a headache right now. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, all right. Um, thank you. Uh, so, um, um, if you have any questions, and I'm pretty sure you will, send me an email. Um, talk to me during the labs, and that's it for today's uh, lecture. Look for the posted materials soon, later on in the evening. I'm going to trigger them, and I'm going to post them, and I'm going to post that. It's not posted yet. Give me about you know, 
half an hour or an hour to post everything. And this video is going to be included in the playlist, okay? Two minutes before the shutdown. Thank you guys, have a great night and I'll see you when I see you.